Today is the day we're moving out of our camper. And we have some tips for you. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And today is an exciting day because we have been waiting five weeks to move out of our camper. If you don't know, we <laughs> have bashed the back end of our camper and we've been waiting for parts. And we're grateful for Blue Dog RV. I mean, yes, we are. Yeah, they, I need to correct her on one thing, though. We didn't do anything. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Yeah, I will put a link below about that. But basically, you know, we're grateful that we were allowed to live in our camper while waiting for parts. And today's video has a lot of information because we're gonna give you a lot of tips about what to do if you have to move out of your camper to get it serviced, all the little ins and outs that are involved. Yeah, there's a lot to do. Step one for us today is getting the rig prepared for going into the shop and that involves we have cabinets over the uh, sofa that's on the back wall, and the back wall is where all the work is going to be done. So we have to clear out all of those cabinets, and we have to we use the space under the sofa. There's a there's a dead body storage. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not at all worried that she thinks of it that way. We lived in our camper. We have a 310 GK, if you don't know, and we lived in it for three or four months before we learned that there was storage under the couch. And I call it the dead body storage because it's the perfect size for a dead body. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it holds quite a bit. If you've got one of these, if you've got a 310 or even if you have a rig that has a sleeper sofa in it, not a jackknife sofa, but a sleeper sofa, um, there is, I don't know, there's probably six inches tall by, what, five feet by three feet, maybe two feet. I think I could put you in there. Probably. <laughs> I might get squashed by the mattress when it comes full time. Right, down. yeah, that would be but it. But if I were dead, it wouldn't matter. <laughs> So we, in addition to doing that, of course, we have to pack for three weeks or a month or however long we're going to be out. Um, and then we also have to assume that we can't leave the fridge running. In fact, we checked with Blue Dog. We can't have the propane running. It's not, uh, you know, well, good it's for not the, safe. Yeah. yeah, it's not safe for their insurance. And of course, we can't uh, have it plugged in. So we have to defrost the fridge mm -hmm. and empty it. Right. So we have an Iceco cooler. It's a freezer and a fridge or just a fridge or just a freezer and it plugs into your cigarette lighter or into your home outlet. I've got the whole thing set to be a freezer right now and uh, it stays around zero degrees most of the time. And it gets there pretty quick and, and again you wouldn't think <laughs> that you would use something like that. We use it all the time. Now yep. since we're full-time RVers we're often far away from the grocery store and we have a liking for fudgesicles <laughs> and ice cream. Yep. So we plug it in, we go into Costco, places like that. By the time we're out, it's, it's gotten down to freezing. And that cooler is the best thing ever. And we partnered with Iceco so you can get a 12% discount. Just use our special link. You will love this cooler. You'll be surprised at all the different places that you'll use it. Yeah, it'll come in handy. If you use a cooler at all, then this is just a cooler on steroids is the way I would refer to it. You never need to buy ice and just the fact that it's a plug-in freezer is just fabulous. Yep. Whenever you're faced with a big project like this, the first step is to make a plan. For us, we were able to break it down into three different things that we needed to do. Number one, we realized we needed to prepare the rig for repairs. Number two, we needed to prepare the rig for storage. And number three, we needed to pack everything that we needed for the next month. After making the plan, the next step is to make lists. Now, I'm a list person, and this absolutely helps so that you don't forget anything. There's just so much to do, and it really helps avoid overwhelm. Now, the list included not just the usual clothes and toiletries, but also our favorite kitchen gadgets, like Paul grinds his own coffee, so we had to make sure he had all the tools for the coffee. I love the panini press, so those things went on the list. Also, our dog Mango needs more than just bringing his food bowls and extra food. He, like most dogs, takes medication once a month for heartworm, so I also packed that and his nail clippers and, you know, a couple other things I thought that he might need. On a big day like this where you're using a lot of energy, you definitely want to make sure that you don't wear yourself out. So one of the things that you want to do is plan to take breaks. 
You want to make sure that you don't use all your energy up, so you need to stop and eat or rest, take a glass of water, just kind of take a breath. If you work too hard, it becomes part of diminishing returns where either you just can't go anymore and you just stop or you're completely useless for the next day or the rest of that day. One of the things that I doubt that you will forget this, but it's something that uh, you want to put on your checklist is to empty your tanks and turn off your propane. You do not want to, they, they would probably check this anyway, but you do not want to put your rig into a shop with the propane tanks open. Right, there's welders and that kind of thing. Yep. So you have to be careful. So now what about the fresh water? Did we go ahead and empty our fresh water? We used it up. Right, and we're in an area where it's not going to get freezing while it's in the shop. If it is going to get freezing, that's then you'd want to winterize yeah, it. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you don't know. I mean, we've talked to people that have lost their camper for months in the shop. We're being told it's only a few weeks, and um, so we're hopeful. But if your rig is going in the shop and it's going to be winter time, then you'll want to have everything ready for below freezing temperatures. Yep. Another thing we are doing is we're putting mouse balls around the rig, and that is a humane mouse deterrent because you know the rig is going to be sitting there we feel like it's possible that it could attract rodents so we're hoping that this will work and keep them away well you may notice that we're not sitting in our camper right now and that's big news now we had talked about we're going to be uh, gosh you know living in a hotel for two or three weeks mm -hmm. and a viewer reached out and said that they had a furnished house that wasn't being used and that we could stay in it I mean, we're so lucky. We're just so grateful for the offer. It's a great place to be and, and it's got everything we need. We feel so fortunate that we're not having to wash dishes out of a hotel bathroom sink. And we just want to thank you, the A-Team, because you guys have been awesome. We actually had someone offer to live in their Class A, someone else, their fifth wheel, someone else said we could come to the Hilton Head area and live yeah. in our house. Yeah. We love you. You guys are absolutely the best. You have reached out and offered so much help. So, so yay, A-Team. Yeah, I mean, you stepped up and, and we, believe me, we really appreciate it. So we know that not everybody that watches this channel are full-timers. So for those of you who have campers, um, how do you prep them when you're gonna store them away for months at a time? Yeah, this is actually the very first time that we've had to move out of our camper. So let us know what we've missed. Wow.